All right, guys, it's time to change things up a bit. Now it's time to think small. Yeah, everyone's always telling us to think big, right? To look at the big picture. I mean, common wisdom often dictates that focusing too much on the little things will keep us from reaching our wider or long-term goals, right? But there's just one problem with that kind of thinking. When it comes to winning tennis matches, sometimes it's the small picture that does the biggest damage. It can mean everything. Tennis is a series of small victories that hopefully culminate into one big triumph at the end, the match. The truth is, you can't win a match without winning any sets. You can't win any sets without winning any games. And you're right, that's where I'm going. You can't win any games unless you win any points. Every time you step in between those lines and begin playing a point, you're really engaging in tons of small battles, or many matches if you will. Every point has its own identity, its own features that make it unique. For example, you're going to need appropriate recovery. You're going to be able to place yourself in the right court position to hit the winning shot. You're going to have to know how to close out the point at net. You're going to be analyzing and assessing the velocity and spin needed when you're generating your shots and also the ones being generated by your opponent. You're going to need to know how to counterattack. You're going to need to know how to execute the proper counterattacks to whatever your opponent is throwing at you, which can vary and does vary greatly from point to point. Okay, so you always need to be on your toes. You're always thinking. You're always working. And this type of thing goes on incessantly until a player ultimately wins. So sure, thinking of the big picture helps in visualization exercises, but when you're on the court trying to wrap your head around the entire match of 100 plus points, and in-game playing styles and strategies and tactics, you can greatly overwhelm slash overload your mind if you're not careful, and it'll happen pretty quick. Remember in a recent US Open, when Serena Williams won four straight games in a row to clinch that title that Azarenka all but surely had in her grasp? Or that quarterfinal match, where Ferrer was down two sets to one, won four in the fifth, and came roaring back to routes of Sterovich. It doesn't matter how big your lead is, if you keep losing game after game, point after point, that lead will quickly disappear. Guaranteed. So yeah, this fact holds just as much truth when you're behind and losing as well as when you're up. Now, did Ferrer feel daunted by the fact that Tipsarevich had a nearly insurmountable lead? Maybe. But what did he do? He didn't let his mind wander everywhere and try to take in everything at one time. But what he did do was he focused. He focused on that one game, that one shot, that one serve he was executing, anything that he was directly facing in that one moment. Now, of course, Ferrer and Serena are world-class athletes with tenacity and discipline to spare. But how are we, quote-unquote, mere mortals going to be able to mentally immerse ourselves in the middle of the moment? without letting the whole scope of the match consume our thoughts and cloud our minds. Here are a few ideas that can help you narrow your focus during the match as well as when you're off the battlefield. Number one, dissect. Break it up. You want to get out your scalpel, get out your gloves, and become a tennis surgeon, if you will. It's critically important not to think about the match as one big obstacle. Instead, you want to break out your scalpel and slice the match apart into sections or quote-unquote mini matches as I stated before. And you want to do this from the jump. Don't wait for it to snowball on top of you because once it gets rolling, it can be pretty hard to stop. So if it's a three-setter, you've got three sections. And from there, each section has six pieces, the games. Then you want to focus on that one game you're currently engaged in and begin to strategically take apart your opponent point by point. All of your focus and your concentration needs to be directed at that one small piece. Block everything else out. The less you ask your mind to do, the better anyway, and the more production you'll gain from it. As my good buddy, well, I don't know him, but I really like what he has to say, Jonathan Kozel, or Kozel, I'm sorry if I butchered that, you know, he says, pick battles big enough to matter, but small enough to win. As tennis players, we think we're superhuman at times. But the truth is, we're not. We're regular human beings 
who can be super at times. There's a difference in there, trust me. Now, as regular humans that are super, there's only so much stimuli that we can handle or devote our attention to at one time. I mean, even the best multitasker in the world can't take in every single detail of every single second and process it correctly. But if you zero in on one subject, that one piece of the puzzle, it's amazing how much attention and focus we're capable of. I mean, pressing your pants with a hot iron before work is cool. But when you combine that with, oh, I have to sweep the porch, and already stressing your mind with the fact that you have to walk the dog, feed the fish, pick up dinner after work, and call the plumber about the leaky faucet during lunchtime, then it becomes problematic. And yeah, ouch, you burn yourself, right? So give your brain a break, and you'll have a better chance of breaking your opponent. Strategy number two, keep the ball in mind. For example, when returning serve, we sometimes involuntarily let our mind drift to something other than our opponent's serve. As we stated before, we are human, right? That's why it can be a tremendous help to take our humanity out of the equation. Instead of thinking about the game from your perspective or studying your opponent and wondering what he's thinking, when you're about to return a shot, focus on your destination. Focus on the landing point of your shot. Mentally visualize the place where you're trying to make it land. When you make a conscious effort to zero in on this lifeless, inanimate, yellow object a little bit more, it becomes much easier to ignore any of the ramblings that are going on in your subconscious. Thinking, will you be able to win this point? Uh, who's looking on? Are they impressed with your work? Is your coach satisfied? Um, you know, is everything going right as planned? You'll be a lot more dialed in and your results will show it. Number three, tie it up in practice. The two previous tips were examples of real-time, middle-of-the-match advice. Now, with that said, though, don't think that you can only sharpen your mental acuity when you're thrust in the midst of a battle royale. The art of zeroing in can be redefined during your practice and training sessions as well. After your conditioning and your drills and so forth, try to find some time to practice some tie breaks essentially many matches with few points to determine the victory. Set it up this way. Both you and your opponent are tied at the very end of a match, and you're each trying to break each other. It's like playing a match where the first person to two points wins. Now, not only will you be in a tie break, but you'll be tied in the tie break. Talk about pressure. When you practice tie breakers, it helps you get used to that do or die feeling and it forces you to put all your attention on that specific moment at hand. And you're doing it under immense and extreme pressure. An added bonus. At some point, we will succumb to the pressure, okay, when we're down and out. And we've all seen a great lead in a match fall to pieces because we couldn't close it when we needed to. So if it happens, don't get too down on yourself. Just work on it, practice it, and you'll get better. But you want to be strong, mentally strong and fortified, when that moment comes up again in your next match. Okay, so you practice it and you'll get better. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If it was something that you already knew, hopefully it helped reinforce that idea. For more tennis tips, tricks, and strategies, visit tennismycamp.com forward slash blog. There's tons of stuff there. And for our mega instructional course of 19 hours of kick butt tennis secrets that'll crush your losing streak and have you winning matches like crazy, Visit the page below, tennismycamp.com forward slash course. All right, see you in the next video.